see my face, I'm I'm assuming. Yes. Yeah, that's good. And let me check my live stream. It says starting live stream. All right, looks like we are live. I'm here with Jack Miller and Justin Pullian. I think uh, everybody knows both of them by now. But if you don't know Justin, he's got a channel that, uh, his, which is by his name, Justin Pullian. And he's uh, been very helpful on uh, being a pain in the ass to Leon Valley and others from behind the scenes. You'll notice right now he's live on his channel for, for a quick shot, and then he'll be joining us in a minute. So that's why you can't hear him right now. And Jack, when we do go into the video, I want to remind you, you probably will not be able to hear it. You'll see it, but you won't hear it. And that's if, I, well, I probably won't even share it on the screen. It'll be on the live show. That way I can keep things a little bit more separated. Okay. I was there. Yeah, you were there. You've seen it a few times, so... <laughs> I've seen it a few times. I have a copy. All right, so I'm just going to play the video for everybody. To In case you haven't seen it, you'll be able to see it. If uh, you have seen it, you want to take a little break, go get something to drink, go to the bathroom, whatever, and come back in a few minutes, the video will be done. And we'll go from there. Uh, I do want to say something before you play it. Okay. Something to consider just to put it into context. Hey, are y'all streaming or not? Yes, we are. Okay, I'm streaming, streaming too. All right, cool. So Steve's, Steve's fixing to play this video, the, the Leon Valley video, the truth, the one that nobody's seen yet, right, in its entirety, I suppose. Or maybe there's folks that are watching that haven't seen it. But to put it into context, Leon Valley police, everybody, surely everybody has seen the Leon Valley uh, Mickey Mouse SWAT team walk through this garage right here and uh, walk through this door over here to my right and put my family on the ground with AR-15s and shotguns pointed at their heads. Everybody's seen that. What you're fixing to see is what actually happened at Leon Valley the day I went there that uh, caused them to want to come here and do this and shut me down. They uh, wrote an affidavit, and in this affidavit, they said that I entered the... Leon Valley Courthouse, and they said that I, so Savaggio wrote an email that I entered the courtroom and that uh, carrying a firearm and in order to lessen the confrontation in front of people in the courtroom, and I stress courtroom, they allowed me to leave. So basically in a nutshell, they state that they observed me, one of the most hated YouTubers among San Antonio Bear County law enforcement. They observed me committing a felony with a handgun attached to my waist, and they let me walk out of the building to lessen confrontation in front of citizens in the building. Citizens that we know now, they care so much about so it was it was citizens in the courtroom jack citizens in the yeah courtroom. well yeah I, I yeah i did stress that he did say courtroom he wrote that courtroom now remember courtroom when you're watching this video but even more so the most hated youtuber among law enforcement here they let me walk out and i'll tell you why they did that after you watch the video all right let me switch screens oh, well, one more thing. All right, go ahead. Detective Anderson, one of the, uh, he looks like he's, he looks like he needs to eat a little bit more. Like, if he showed up on backing up someone, my first question would be, that's your backup? Anyway, Detective Anderson I was fight in court under oath on that I was being watch the video. Uh, we're having problems with your connection there, Jack. But let's... Jack, you're lagging pretty good. You want to go inside to your studio? You're lagging pretty bad. 
Uh, we'll go. I can fix that. All right, I'm gonna go to the video. Yeah, Mr. Rivera, I have a question. Yes, sir. What is this place? What, what's in here? City Hall, the police department, um, city manager. That's about it. Animal court. control. Court. Court. Yes, sir. Animal control. Police department. So it's not just a courthouse, right? No, it's not just a courthouse. Okay. Who can I talk to about your 30 out of 6, 30 out of 7 signs? Well, who do you want to speak to? They're a violation of Chapter 711 of the government code. Oh, I'm sorry? They're a violation of the government code to have those up. You guys can prohibit weapons, but you can't put those signs up. Okay, so. give me one minute and I'll be okay. right there, okay? Is that better, guys? Okay, no, give me one minute, okay? You don't have okay. to stop what you're doing. You take care of what you're doing, and I'll, I'll got plenty of time. <laughs> okay, no problem. If you have any medals, please don't get it. I'm right here. Yeah. Yeah, I just need to talk to somebody about it. That's all. What do you need now? Uh, the 30 out 6, 30 out 7 signs, you guys can prohibit weapons in here. You can tell me, get out, we don't allow guns in here. But the 30 out 6, 30 out 7 signs, you may not, y'all may not be aware of this, and I'm here to make y'all aware of it. They're illegal. They're a violation of Chapter 711 of the Government Code. Um, the way it works is that you guys can take them down or leave them up. If you leave them up and I file a complaint with the AG, they'll tell you to take them down. Okay. It'll give you 10 days to do that. So can we can right, get them taken down without go, 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 go ahead and do that and go and step outside with your gun. Okay? Can we get them? It's a coordinate right now and, and it's a... Uh, go okay. please step outside. Sure. But it's a multi-use building. Okay. Right. So, so and, and uh, Chapter 711 is well, you, very you clear. Well, you office and, and we'll deal with them. Uh, there, and and everything will be fine. Is there, you're, is not, there, you're not going to go back in there with your gun on because there's court's being held right now so right right i'm not i'm not deaf okay. i heard you the first time okay okay so so here here's the deal so you heard me saying third time to, too though about what about what i just said I'm, i heard you the, said you weren't deaf and you I, heard me the I, first time but i said did you hear me the second third time too i, I might not okay. have which, okay. which which part are you talking about i'm talking about the part you said you heard me the first time well i heard you when you said get out with the gun mm -hmm. and you said that again and again and i'm like i heard you okay. on that the signs are there if you have a problem with it, notify the AG's office, have them notify us, and we'll, we'll deal with it. Is there any way to for you guys to just look at the law and follow the law on your own without having to get the AG to tell you to follow the law? I, I just told you what you need to do, sir. Have a All good right. day. What's your, I need All your right. name and badge number. Huh? Before you leave, can I get your name and badge number? My name's uh, Jim Wells, 548. So no possibility of just following the law on your own. You got to have the AG babysit you. <laughs> okay. So, uh, official? Willing yeah, to talk to me? He yeah, wasn't too nice. What's the problem? Okay. Here? I'm willing to talk to you. There's no problem. You're allowed Absolutely. to practice your First Amendment right to your. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not Steve doing that. Playing. Okay. Well, uh, but what, what I'm here to do it. is the signs. So 30 out 6, 30 out 7 signs. I was. I, I asked the officer if I could talk to somebody. Oh, it's on him. his. They want to hear it. So the 30 out 6, 30 out 7 signs. Yeah, I'm just here to let you guys know that Chapter 711 of the Government Code makes it illegal for you guys to put those signs up. Okay. Um, the Attorney General has on their website. And I'm just. Well, tell you what, I'm not going to stand here and argue the law with you. Have the attorney general get a hold of us. But that was my question. I had him. Have him get a hold of us. Is it possible? We, we follow. Is it possible that Leon Valley could just look at the law? Just whenever, uh, whenever as far somebody as we're, has we're in time? compliance with the law, and we're entitled to do this uh, because we have our. Unfortunately, we don't have our own courthouse. We have to use right, right, this right. building. I get, this courthouse. I, I get that. So, I get that. I get that. You want a confrontation, bro? I'm not going to give it I, to you. I don't want a confrontation. Have a good day. Don't block the entrance. I don't want a confrontation. Do not block the entrance. Okay. Do not obstruct any entrance. But I don't way. want, I don't want a, a confrontation, night. sir. <laughs> okay. So let me go put my gun up and I'll go try it again. All right. I think right there from that rate, the way they acted, we hey. already can tell from that what kind of police department that is. So go ahead, Jack. Hey, Steve. Uh, I think Justin is playing the video for his viewers. 
Let's go. No, let's no, no. Get... They've, they, they've seen it. Or else they're on yours. They're good. Continue. I, I was I was messed up there, but it's good. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. It's all right. So, like I said, uh, from that interaction right there, and this is early on in the Leon Valley story, how they're going to be. That can tell you right there. Now, Jack, tell me if I'm wrong. They wanted this video to cover up the fact that they lied to the magistrate to get you, to get, you know, get you raided. They lied to the magistrate about how you were acting in this, at this time. You were being loud, abusive, whatever, you know. And and I'm not going to let the, the magistrate off the hook here. If he would have read the paperwork he was given to get that warrant on you, and if he had any brains at all, he would have seen it was BS. Besides what the lies were, it was just total BS. I saw it, and I remember reading that, and it was just absolute crap. So the, the magistrate just rubber stamped it. He didn't even read it. But anyway, they wanted to hide this video. Tell me what you think. Well, you posed uh, two issues there. One is the the, uh, the way the magistrate handled it, and uh, the other is how why Leon Valley handled it the way they did. So, uh, addressing why Leon why I believe Leon Valley handled it the way they did, uh, they have testified in federal court. Joe Savaggio testified in federal court, and then they again reiterated the same testimony in the uh, October 30th hearing that they were fully aware that I am known to take my videos <coughs> and upload them to YouTube. They, so they knew that they knew mm -hmm. that they knew where that what's, what was going to happen with that video. And they knew that if they wrote the affidavit, the way they wanted to write it, which is the way they wrote it. And anybody caught wind of what actually happened, it was going to result in probably a quick dismissal by the DA because they write that I went into the Leon Valley Municipal Court facility, but video footage will show that the outside of that building says Leon Valley City Hall, Leon Valley Police as a dedication plaque. It's the Leon Valley Municipal Facility. It's a multi-use building. So they had to get their hands on that video. They had to. So they, they set up outside my house before I got home and waited for me to drive up and immediately came in and, amongst other things, grabbed that video. And then, for the past almost two years, they refused for a whole year and a half or so, they refused to hand that video over to the district attorney. Uh, the time frames are a little foggy. I don't have the exact time frames. But they fought for quite a while to keep that out of the hands of the DA. The reason the DA wanted it is because my attorney wanted it as part of discovery. We're entitled to have that by law. Leon Valley did not want us to get that video. And it took a court order. My attorney had to obtain a court order the judge ordering Leon Valley to hand over evidence in a felony criminal offense that they filed. There had to be a court order to hand over evidence in that case. That speaks a thousand words. What department doesn't want to hand over video that the felony suspect took of himself committing the alleged crime? Unless it doesn't help their case. That's why. And we've seen that. We've seen it before all across this country. The PDs and the DAs withhold evidence on purpose to get people convicted. But we didn't, couldn't expect any more, less from Leon Valley because we know how they are. So anyway, go ahead, Jack. So I'll tell, I'll tell you something. Uh, Justin Pulliam, <laughs> Justin Pulliam's a smart dude. A really smart dude. You're, you're being too generous there, Jack. So, so can I tell him what you did, Justin? Oh, you're welcome to tell. Yeah, no, tell all of it. I mean, uh, you're talking about like um, 
how I did all this without ever trying to pass the California bar exam, right? That's what you're going to talk about? That's right. Yeah, <laughs> I, I never tried. And how many times do you think it would take you to pass that bar exam? Uh, you know, maybe once or twice. You, you got a college education, not. right? But probably not 23. You got a college education, right? Um, I do. No. Okay. And, you know, I got a GED. I'm thinking, I'm thinking 15 times. That's what I'm thinking. But who knows? Maybe one day we'll see. But anyway, yeah, so Leon Valley. Oh, yeah, this is what Justin did. So the government was denying that they had the records. The Justin files some public information requests at, at several different places. You see, the thing about government is, amongst all the other bullshit, <laughs> the right hand doesn't know what the left hand's doing. Mm-hmm. And because the right hand didn't know what the left hand's doing, while one side is saying they don't have the records, the other side is telling Justin, we've located the records, but we're going to file with the attorney general's office to keep them secret. Now, this is Justin asking for my video from the GoPro I had on my chest. One side is saying that they don't have it. The other side is saying they're, they have and, it. And this is in the same office. This is in the Bear County District Attorney's Office. Yeah, they're just on different floors. <laughs> and it's and it's so true like one time i sent a complaint and it took like two months they it, it took them like two months to find it and they only found it then after i um after i sent a complaint to the attorney general and i mean i talked to like every office and it's just amazing how dysfunctional they are but when it comes to maliciously prosecuting activists boy you know what they give it their all yeah they do so, so once once they all realize that they screwed the pooch and revealed the truth that they actually did have it. Well, the rest is history. And here we are today with the video. And I hope so there's people from there. Leon Valley seeing all this and realizing we're, what we're, kind of trash they have over there and the DA's office in San Antonio. Every time, every time you every time you unlawfully arrest one, it's like uh, it's like throwing water on a gremlin. Yeah. We're feeding a gremlin after midnight. All kinds just start popping out. So every time you screw one, two or three more are born. And with all these people out there looking at you and pointing cameras at you and educating themselves on the law and the public information law, if you try to do these things, you're going to get caught. So just stop, just stop already. You're going to get caught. You know, this whole thing would have, would have been very simple. If they would have done the right thing from the very beginning, none of this would have happened. There wouldn't have been a protest. There wouldn't have been false arrest. You wouldn't have been raided. There wouldn't be lawsuits. There wouldn't be hundreds of thousands of dollars being spent by the DA to get you and others. All they had to do was do the right thing in the first place, and none of this would have been happening and there wouldn't have been a few extra activists out there. That's right. So the second, so they came into my house to get that video. And uh, they also came into the house for a couple of other reasons. Yeah. It wasn't because I committed a felony. Uh, it was because they wanted to get their hands on that video so they could uh, spread their narrative and have unsuspecting judges and district attorney folks and stuff like that believe their lie. The other thing they wanted to do was shut me down. They wanted to, to they wanted to shut me down for a little bit. They wanted to, and I and I'm gonna tell you why I say that. They didn't just take my my GoPro footage. Uh, they also took things like a microphone. <laughs> they took a microphone stand. They took a. GoPro cases, not GoPros, but cases that were in boxes. Did they take they your webcam? Their, they took my webcam. Well, that at all. Didn't they take your uh, uh, thing for cable TV, your box? They took my modem. Yeah. <laughs> they took my modem. Now, there's a funny story behind why they took my modem, and I'm going to get to that because that's another reason they can't. So, so yeah, they took my modem. Um None of that was listed on the search warrant, by the way. And if you don't know about search warrants, you can't take anything that's not on the search warrant. 
they went after they took the things that were on the search warrant, which were like three, four items, I think. A computer, uh, GoPro, black pistol, and uh, photographic evidence. In other words, it gives them the authority to take photo of, of the evidence. Yeah. Um, they also took things that were not on the search warrant. And uh, they took my wife's cell phone. My wife's cell phone. Now, the search warrant did say cell phone. And you would think, well, they took her phone because it said cell phones. That was my, it has to be uh, items that are, have a nexus to the alleged offense. Yeah, your so, wife's cell phone was not at Leon Valley. And then some people might say, well, maybe they didn't know it was her phone. No. Yes, they did. In order for her, she, she needed to get some phone numbers out of her phone. They said they were taking it. So they forced her to enter the code on her phone. They asked her if it was her. She said yes. They forced her to enter the code on the phone so she could get numbers out. They held it in their hand, made her do the code, and then, you know, and then took it. Yeah, so that, that's pretty obvious it was yours. But if they would have asked her, if they would have asked her for the code to her phone, maybe she might have just said, here, fucking take it, look at it, give it to me back. There's nothing on it. But yep. that's not what happened. So something else, something else they did. They took weapons. They took what they thought were all of my guns. And they weren't on the search warrant. A pistol was on the search warrant. They took a rifle. They were going to take my wife's guns. They took your flashlight, too. They stole a flashlight out of the trunk of my car. They left the box in there, but they... It was a brand one of one of a couple of brand new flashlights I had received from HBO Mac. Yeah, they took one of those. They're they're high dollar, and uh, yeah, they took that one might of have been one of the main reasons they wanted to get in that car because they wanted that flashlight. Well, they didn't list it on their inventory. <laughs> of course not, because they wanted it for themselves. It's a good flashlight. So, um, so yeah, and then so they they wanted to, of course shut me down, at least temporarily, right? Make it financially tough. Right. And then also they wanted to send a message. They wanted to send a message out to anybody, to me and to anybody like me, that if you come in and you try to make us follow the law, that we are going to come into your house and do this. And there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. And it wasn't just to scare you. It was to scare anybody else that might want to try coming to Leon Valley and holding them accountable. Yeah, and it was most likely on behalf of all the bad law enforcement out there. We're going to show that. We're going to show them. Yeah, well, and also I think at this point I'd like to say that Kirby police did a good job holding them back. They knew you and we'll knew you it. weren't dangerous like Savadio we'll was trying that. to scare everybody and make you, them think you were dangerous so maybe you would get killed. So we'll get into that in a minute. You had another point besides what they yeah. were doing with the search warrant. What yeah. was that? The judge, the magistrate. Oh, yeah. So the judges, guys, I was in law enforcement for 13 years. I've worked, I've worked in the jail most of the time. I've, I've worked some patrol. I've worked in the courts. I have taken, I have taken probable cause affidavits to municipal court judges on arrests that I made. <coughs> and said, you know, I sign it and the judge establishes that there's probable cause and issues the warrant or commitment or whatever it is but anyway i've taken these papers myself and i've seen countless affidavits taken before this court judge in travis county and let me tell you they just rubber stamp them they do not read them they get handed I worked on a night shift for a while, and it was not uncommon to see 20, 30 arrest affidavits stacked on the judge's desk. The judge has magistration, walks into his office, starts signing them. That one, he's like, he's like this. He goes, he looks at it, it looks, it looks good to form, doesn't read it, puts it down, signs it, puts it in the next stack, grabs the next one. That's why I wanted to bring this up, because that's part of the problem with this whole system. Is they just does. take the whatever a cop puts down on a piece of paper, don't read it. He's a cop. He must be right. Boom. Here you go. That's bullshit. Sometimes, sometimes oh. officers come in and the judge actually kind of looks at it 
what happens is th this particular officer wants this guy, wants this guy, and he wants a high bond on it. So even though the regular bond is supposed to be, let's say, 10000 on it, the officer says, hey, hey, Your Honor, I'm going to ask for a $50,000 bond on this one, and this is what happened. Uh, I pulled the guy over. He had a lot of drugs on him. I'm charging him possession of drugs. But he was also very rude to me. He cussed at me, he called yeah. me all kinds of names, called my supervisor names. I need a $50,000 bond on this. And the judge does this. He takes it and he goes, signs it, smiles at the officer, shakes his hand, and gives it to him. He doesn't read the whole thing. Yep. I guarantee you, I guarantee you, if a police officer walked into the San Antonio Magistrate's office or the Travis County Magistrate's office, and I say those two because I can speak to those, but I'm sure it's done everywhere. And he walks in and says, Pat, and, and sticks an affidavit in a stack, and it says, Jack Miller was in a public place chewing bubble gum. And the bubble gum was pink. And it's supposed to be green. The judge, that affidavit would get signed. I don't I doubt charge? it. No. Because when they try to submit it into the booking, they might catch that and say, hey, what's this? What law is this? But the judge won't catch it. And that, that's that's what happened. That That's how a judge signed off on it here. Yeah. To, to be honest, though, I think there was one time, where I, I think it was with you, but it might have been one, one of the others when a lot of this was going on. We had so much activity around all this, Leon Valley, almost Park that the magistrate actually denied one or two charges. Actually, out of a bunch of them, one or two. Well, once it started becoming pop, uh, common knowledge, you know, Leon Valley, almost Park, with all their crappy arrests, all the crap, you know, I had a San Antonio police officer here write an affidavit back a year and a half ago that said, he wrote that I walked into the path of a vehicle. Well, luckily for me, Steve from PMP News was backing me up. <laughs> and when they found out that Steve caught on his camera, Steve was covert. He was hidden, filming from afar. And when You can't always word, see me, but I'm, li I'm liable to be there. <laughs> they got word that, he w that I had somebody there filming, so they changed it to jaywalking. <laughs> they literally lied on an affidavit. Then turned around and changed it to jaywalking. Took out that I walked in the path of the vehicle because we had proof that I didn't. There were no vehicles there except for police cars. <laughs> they changed it. And did anything happen to them? No. Yeah. So, and yeah, by so the cool. way, there is no jaywalking in that part of San Antonio. There's no jaywalking ordinance in that part of San Antonio. Oh yeah, that that case was dismissed. <laughs> See, that's what that's not a good. They know that it too. They, the San Antonio police know where their jaywalking ordinance is. They knew Absolutely. that you were outside of it. They did not care. There, there is no jaywalking statute in Texas. There is a jaywalking ordinance in the city of San Antonio, yeah. and it, it's only in a certain area of the city downtown. Yeah. But outside of that area, you're subject to a law that governs crossing the street, but it's not jaywalking. And th this law is in the Transportation Safety Code, and it, it's basically this. You can walk, you can use a crosswalk, and if you use a crosswalk, vehicles have to yield to you. If they don't, they are committing an offense. If you walk at a place other than a crosswalk and you cross the street, you have to yield to vehicles. And if you don't yield to vehicles, you're breaking the law. It's not jaywalking. It's uh -huh. entering the path of a vehicle. But there are police officers. If a car is a mile away from you, going 20 miles an hour, and you cross it, if he wants you, he will charge you for that. The point is, is that I was doing an open carry and First yeah. Amendment audit. The first police officer that showed up, we had a cons it was a consensual encounter the entire time. Yeah. Consensual encounter. She asked some questions. I answered them. I was done answering questions at one point. I told him, have a nice day. I walk away. Then I turned across the street after walking about 50 feet away. I crossed the street. And uh, one of the officers was like, well, oh, there you go. We got him. Wrote a uh, swore that I entered the path of the vehicle, found out that we have evidence that didn't. So he's like, fuck it. I'll just charge him with the jaywalking. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, 
enough of that. That's that's why that's why judges sign stuff like this. All right. Is there anything else we want to get up for the Leon? I mean, almost park stuff. Uh, I mean, Leon Valley. God, I had it right the first time. Justin, is there anything you want to add in? Hey, everybody. I'm not really uh, watching the chat. I'm watching the screen here. I got three screens going with what's going on on YouTube and this screen yeah, and that the, screen. Yeah, they're, 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 they're complaining about the music. I was playing on mine. Um, I guess the one thing I don't want to point out, I think Jack was kind of touching on it, but but this is when when Jack went in there. That was the day when Savaggio decided that we cannot have video in this building. That was the day, and they Good went point. to Jack's house to make that policy retroactive. Yeah. And they didn't stop there. They took all of his stuff, even like y'all are saying, his cable modem, to shut down Sheepdog, and they tried to just take him all the way out, but they were at least going to shut him down. Yeah. And they never did get the video from the video cameras around the house. <laughs> okay, so so the, the modem. Here, here's the story about the modem. It's quite funny. So while I was outside and my family was on the inside, my son says they were they were asking everybody, where where is the camera system? <laughs> because when you walk into my house, you immediately notice external cameras all over the place. They were asking the family. Where is the camera system? Everybody remained quiet except for my son. My son said, uh, excuse me, sir. And they were like, yes. Um, I think my dad made it clear when he said you can suck his cock. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they thought he was going to say where the camera system was. <laughs> so anyway, um, the point is, nobody here would tell them where the camera system was. Why? Because it, it's not important. Who cares where my camera system is? You were here to take some things that are on a warrant, take them and leave. Yeah, they wanted it because they didn't want on video what the different things that were said outside. They didn't want anything inside. So you guys don't know this, but Leon Valley didn't show up with any body cams. Kirby had body cams. Yeah. All the footage that you see came from the Kirby Police Department. Yeah, I get. I they remember wanting to get that. Cams. I think uh, Justin Every put single... in the the paperwork for it, and I picked it up. Yeah, and Steve, I think Steve paid for it. So thank you for doing that. No problem. Every single Kirby police officer put their body cams on. Leon Valley had none. Before Leon Valley started conducting the search warrant, they ensured that everybody with a body cam left my home. Yeah. What What does it mean? What, let me tell you what it means with police make sure cameras leave before they start doing stuff because they're fixing to do stuff. They're not supposed to do like pee on Such the, as, like pee on the bathroom floor. So, so back to the camera thing. So what they did was they were searching around. My son says they walked out with a VCR, a VC, an old, I'm sorry. It was a DVD player. <laughs> and one of the officers walked up. I think it was that fat little white one. Who was it? Uh, Azer. Laundry or something like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Chad, Chad, um, yeah, Mandry. Manly. Yeah, Mandry walks out with a, I think it was Mandry. I don't know. I don't know who it was. But anyway, I didn't, because that, that wasn't on video. There's a piece of my living room that's not on video. But anyway, uh, my son said he's like, yeah, he walked out with the DVD player and he was like, I think I found it. And one of the other, other officers was like, that's a DVD player. So then they go back into my office. And they're looking really hard for my camera system. They could not find it. So they took my modem. They thought disconnecting my modem would kill the cameras. Because there's no wires going to them. Well, newsflash. There's no wires going to them because they are fake. <laughs> the ones that they could see are fake. Yep. It's the ones that they can't see that have wires to them. So I have pinhole cameras in my house. And I want to remind everybody here, if you have cameras around your home, remember there is a thing called the cloud. <laughs> and so I have, that's a good place have, to put them because they can't have, get them there. Absolutely. Absolutely. So so I had pinhole cameras. I had a couple of them. Namely, I had one in my office. And I'll tell you where it's at. It was in a picture frame. <laughs> and... So they wanted all the, the so so I know what I know pretty much a lot of the stuff that they did in my house. I don't know all of it, but I know most of it. Like I know for a fact 
that two officers picked up a, a, a lamp of mine that was gifted to me many years ago. It's about an $80 lamp. It's multicolors. It's made in India, some kind of glass, colored glass, stained glass or whatever. It's really nice. They, took, they sell them at a, a local mall here. And the two officers commented on the lamp, picked it up. The top of it detaches. They talked about, oh, yeah, I, I think I saw one of those over at the, the mall. Bah, 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 bah. Those things are expensive. An officer takes the lamp, takes the top off, drops it on the floor, it breaks, and says, it's not expensive anymore. <laughs> not a turd. Yeah. Um, they walked in and used my restroom 11 times, at least. And it was evident to my family when they walked in there that at least one of them purposely pissed everywhere but the toilet. Yep. I remember coming over there that night afterwards, after you were already gone and everything, that uh, I heard some of the stuff. So this is just two things. This is just two things that they did. Um, I'm going to just stay quiet for now on the rest of the stuff that I caught that was extremely inappropriate and uh, somewhat illegal. Yeah. They went through every single piece, every single document in my house. They went through every single bit of it and took pictures of everything. Wait, so he has a picture of your um, your uh, Texas Commission on Law Enforcement paperwork? Oh, yeah, he has a picture of my Texas Commission on Law Enforcement so why is he? Why does he continue to lie? Because he's a liar. That's what liars do. <laughs> That's what liars do. Liars lie. Haters yeah. hate. Liars lie. Um, yeah, they were supposed to do that. So, yeah, so that's why that, that's, that was just a little funny uh, story about the modem. Yeah, I, I thought a, that. Yeah. A modem that was, I was leasing from the uh, local cable company that I had to pay for out of pocket. You should have reported it stolen. Well, I'm not a liar. <laughs> You know what I mean? Well, it was stolen. It wasn't on the. It wasn't supposed to be confiscated. It wasn't on the warrant, right? So they stole it. I guess you could say that in theory. Yeah, I would think that they should be able to get it back, just like when uh, Joe goes and they seize all these other cars that are either rental cars or, are you know, uh, owned by the lender. They are able to get their cars back out of Joe's impound lot after they, of course, pay an extortion fee. Yeah. So I would you know, think that the cable company could get their modem back after paying the $20 property room fee or whatever sort of revenue generation they tried to. Um, because there's a thing called um, uh, they, they go around to people's home and collect what's called bound property or something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and they still charge you to get your own shit back when they arrest you falsely or not. Detective Numbnuts. What was his name? Anderson? Anderson. Yeah, Detective Anderson testified at the October 30th hearing. And by the way, the October 30th hearing was to uh, suppress the arrest warrant and the search warrant. And the judge came back and ruled that he was not going to suppress it because neither side presented evidence that I had a license to carry a handgun. Now, I've had a license to carry a handgun for as long as I can remember. And uh, they knew it. Uh, Everybody knows that. But whether I had a handgun license or not, whether I, it, it has no bearing on the charge. But that's the reason the judge used, because the judge doesn't want to be the one to kill this case. Whoever kills the case is not going to be a popular person amongst law enforcement. And law enforcement is very powerful in getting people elected. So there you go on that. Hey, adjust your but, focus uh, as, I'm going to interrupt real quick. Just, adjust your focus as interesting Texas Sheepdog, all these odd actions on a warrant search. That's why we're bringing them up because it is odd. It's wrong. It's odd. It shows that there's something going on besides a normal, everyday warrant. For why, why, why a police officer would violate somebody's rights openly is odd, and everything that follows after that is even more odd. Yeah. It's just a preponderance so, yeah. of all these different things put together. Even if we didn't have any other videos, this could show you something right there. It shows you what kind of people that the Leon Valley uh, 
I don't know who the mayor was. I was trying to think of the mayor's name, but I don't remember if he was the one, if the mayor now is the one that hired Savadio. But it shows you what kind of trash they hire. Well, I heard, I heard that when he was being interviewed with the city council, he was bragging, bragging about his dysfunctional relationship with the San Antonio Police Department. Oh, you mean but the they one hired him anyway. The one where he got caught cheating on a test for promotion or something like that well well don't be careful you don't want to get sued you don't want to get sued well that's what the paperwork said that he he was fired for cheating on the paperwork right so and and that was the allegation and uh he will say that he was found not guilty of cheating but everybody knows what he was doing he was writing down stuff from the test that he missed because he's an idiot and he couldn't pass it and he needed to retake it and uh, or in case he felt it or whatever and uh you know he was cheating that's cheating you can't do that anywhere unless you're a cop and you have an arbitrator that will rule against what the city says you did and that's give you your job back that's the no, problem no, with the joe, unions that's no, the problem with the no, damn no, unions yeah. hey, hey joe mm-hmm. no 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 you didn't win anything the arbitrator cited you you didn't win nothing the city says you cheated and that's forever in record the city says you cheated. So have the city come and turn around and say, hey, Joe didn't cheat. And then then maybe you'll have some credit. But when you go around saying, no, no, I didn't cheat because I won. No, 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 no. We know the truth. You, you cheated. And it's not a big deal. You, done, you, done, you, got, bigger, you got bigger things to worry about <laughs> than uh, a little cheating. Yeah. So... You've done things that you need to worry about. You need to worry about the civil the civil liability associated with it. And even the ones but you anyways, haven't heard of yet. Right. <laughs> uh, Justin was touching on found property. Yeah. So D- Detective Anderson, uh, when questioned during the October 30th hearing, now, now if you're about the Second Amendment and you're about the right to keep your firearms, and you're about the right to not have police come in your home and do general searches for anything they want without a search warrant, without the authority to do so. Listen up real close. And you can quote me on this. Detective Anderson, when questioned as to why they seized a rifle from my home that was not listed on the search warrant, Detective Anderson testified that they asked the folks that were in the home who the wife belonged to and nobody would answer. So they, I quote, figured it was just found property. Did anybody ask Jack Miller if the rifle they found in Jack Miller's home was Jack Miller's rifle at any time? No. And is this, this was a rifle. They opened the closet up, and they're like, "Oh, hey, I got a rifle." And the other guy's like, "Oh, f yeah, f yeah." <laughs> so, so, so yeah. Anderson, so Anderson tested. Remember what I said about the right hand knowing not, not knowing what the left hand's doing. Detective Anderson testified that they treated the rifle as found property. I asked for it back. They won't give it back because it's evidence. Yeah, evidence of what? You what? There with you. So, yeah, that that really happened. I'm not making yeah. this up. The the, the ends that, that Leon Valley, I, I mean, God, Here's the, the ends that they will go through and the city will let them, they haven't fired him yet. So, so here's something else I want to share about the October 30th hearing, if I can. Uh, Chief Savaggio, we did not subpoena him because the city was prepared to fight to keep him from testifying on the stand. Why? You guys come up with your own conclusions on why the city would not want Savaggio to take the stand. Perhaps they saw his performance at the October 3rd, 2017 federal hearing. They were prepared to fight, and that would have uh, extended the uh, hearing case and would have extended the whole case. So we chose not to subpoena Joe this time. Well, Joe thinking he wasn't not going to have to take the stand, shows up to court. Everybody's put under rule and has to leave the room. Well, my attorney didn't see him walk in because he walked in a little later before the hearing started, but a little later. 
So I tell my attorney, hey, uh, Joe, you know, Savaggio's here. Is he going to be under rule? And Joe Savaggio is, starts snickering. And I get up to go up to tell my attorney something. And Joe goes, I wasn't subpoenaed. He's talking to me. And I turned and I said, watch this. So when the hearing started, one of the first things the uh, attorney uh, addressed was the fact that Joseph Aggio was in the room and that she may call him as a witness since he's here. And I'm not a lawyer, but the way I understand it is that attorneys can't call witnesses under certain circumstances. And perhaps uh, the, you know, my attorney felt that she, she could, she could possibly argue that she could call him in, even though he wasn't subpoenaed. Joe gets up and tries to take over the whole fucking hearing walks up to where the attorneys are and starts talking about i haven't been subpoenaed i haven't been subpoenaed and my attorney's like well i may call him judge i may call him judge and basically the judge said joe sit your ass down on this witness stand so joe was ordered to take the witness stand first witness called and uh they went back and forth and answered some questions and one of the questions was about seizing my wife's cell phone and Joe testified that he had nothing to do with the raid. Test it had nothing to do with anything that was going on there. Even though you see him in the video, in the raid video, standing in my kitchen, trying to get a rise out of me and laughing and carrying on. Joe testified the only thing he did in regards to the to my wife's cell phone. Yeah. There you go. That that's that's Joe having nothing to do with the raid. Where is he at? Is he in my kitchen? No, no, that's what at the court. Oh, that's that's Joe sitting out next to News Now Patrick. I, I got to give it to Patrick, man. He walked into that courtroom and he sat right next to Joe. <laughs> that was funny as hell. And at one point, they started arguing with each other in the courtroom to the point where I had to turn around and look at Patrick and say, "Stop!" They were being so loud. Joe, Joe, just just being loud, arguing with Patrick. So, but yeah. So Joe testified he didn't have anything to do with the raid, and that they did not confiscate my wife's phone. But they did. Yeah. So just a little aside, I found records that uh, Savaggio, like, um, whenever Patrick goes on an audit out of town, Savaggio calls the chief of police and like sends him over like a packet on Patrick. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. He testified in federal court that he has officers that he has assigned to all of our social media accounts to monitor and log and file that, uh, the activity. Go ahead. Because, yeah, because all the crime is solved in Leon Bali. <laughs> they, they, you know, they, they, they want to shut us down that bad. What else you got, man? I, I'm good. I just was enjoying the extra conversation, the, the, some of the little things that I had forgotten about. I know there's some folks uh, watching that have donated uh, to me, and I did a live stream on it, and, but I know there's some folks that watch Justin and may not watch me, may watch Steve and may not watch me, so I'm just going to put this out there. Uh, if you've donated, I, I super appreciate it. Um, I, I know life's hard on a lot of folks, and you're not in a position where you can give any money, uh, but the ones that have donated, I just want to speak to you for a second. I really do appreciate it. It has helped me tremendously. Uh, if you have donated and you ever uh, have a question about where the money might be going, um, I have no problem showing you where the money has gone. Um, you're not allowed to do GoFundMes for your criminal defense and things like that. Um, so, you know, I'm not going to be able to come on this street. Look, if my uh, fund, GoFundMe account says it's for something, that's what it's for. But if you've donated, um, I have your information. If you shoot me an email and you want to, you want to see for yourself, uh, I will show you personally. Hey, Jack, there's, um, there's a question here. I'll, hold on. Okay. I'll never put anything out there about who's donated, but I will show you personally. So just to let you know, I don't do drugs. I don't I don't. I'm not an alcoholic. I don't have a gambling problem. I'm nothing. There's a question here that says uh, from Holy Fucktard Batman. Uh, do you guys feel you have aggressive legal representation or just mild legal representation? I'll let you answer that because I'm not really involved with that part that much. 
So getting like legal representation is a task in and of itself. It's extremely hard. Uh, attorneys here locally do not want to, I don't know, how can I say this? They don't want to shit where they eat. Uh, just like law enforcement makes it extremely difficult for us to hold them accountable, they can equally make it as difficult, if not more difficult, for attorneys who practice in this area and uh, represent us, sue us, so on and so forth. That's why I've had to get an attorney from another part of Texas and uh, for a civil attorney, uh, had to use one from another state. Now, as far as these attorneys go, I would I would call these attorneys aggressive in their representation. However, it's only the beginning. And yeah. what was the question? Do I have or do I need? Uh, no, asking if you had thought you had aggressive representation, and you just answered it. You you feel yeah, like I think did. I think I think I have a well qualified. Uh, legal team and and I, I think they're they're filing the motions and doing the things that need to be done I think other attorneys would would not be as diligent as they are they'd be wanting you to go meet with the DA um, I was just my, give an my, I, my, I, my okay my criminal attorney uh, she has the First Amendment in her heart mm -hmm. let me tell you and my civil attorney has the First Amendment in his heart he just recently was part of he's, he's, he's part of many cases across the United States, and a lot of them do make the news. He's not out there seeking headlines and whatnot, but his most recent case was a man, I think, out of Chicago that was released from prison after 32 years, and I think it was based on some DNA testing. So my attorney is involved with things like the, I think, I, I'm not sure if he's directly involved with the Innocence Project, but it's, it's things like that. And so, yeah, both my attorneys are very uh, uh, civil rights oriented attorneys. They're well qualified. And for the life of me, I do not know why Joe and company think they stand a chance <laughs> against this guy. Do, are they not looking him up? That's what arrogance does to you. I, that you, you think get, you, when you put get, arrogance and a badge and a gun on somebody without much authority and the legal screwed up legal system and qualified immunity and not having to pay for your own lawyers and having endless amounts of money, then you think you can do anything. You think you're freaking Superman, and you're not. I think quite possibly when uh, Pink Camera Magic got her uh, ticket for disorderly conduct, I, I think that uh, I don't. I'm not going to say that that Savaggio talked to my attorney who also represent, represents her and has successfully represented her against a, uh, I think Michigan or something, something like that. But anyway, I don't think they actually talked about it. I think Savaggio saw his name on the caller ID and immediately <laughs> put an APB out for all the officers and said, pull that ticket. <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it. That's what I think happened. All right. Justin, do you have anything else you want to say? Yeah, I wanted to give an update. Uh, Jack was talking about the donations and everything, and, and sometimes there's some um, officers that are just so butthurt about being, uh, you know, not even necessarily held accountable, but just the transparency of people seeing what's going on in the city or city hall, and they try to do things to mess with activists. And i just like to point out that I don't know how much PayPal Jack's gotten since, over, I guess, about the past week, uh, but on GoFundMe, between the GoFundMe's, uh, y'all have supported Jack with $2,000, um, which definitely helps keep him going in all the legal fights that he's in. And thank you all. And uh, I would just like to let the, you know, the state actors who do dirty things that, you know, Jack has a lot of support behind him. And, uh, you know, if you want to act up, then, you know, people will be there to support him. Yeah. And my go ahead. My, 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 my legal bills right now, just for the Leon Valley case, are right around $10,000. Uh, my legal bills, uh, uh, just my total cost, not just legal fees, but my total cost, uh, I have about $10,000 worth of skin in the game on that. In total, uh, I'm, I'm hitting right about 16000 And uh, so the, the donations do help. Anything anything anybody can give, a dollar, five dollars, whatever, it all helps. It all helps, and it's very much appreciated. Yeah, if everybody just that, that subscribed to it just gave a buck. I mean, that would, you know, just imagine where that would be. And guys, am I am I am I e begging? I, I don't know. I, I don't I call this e begging. You know what? Call it what you want. But I will tell you this: I'm I'm fighting for the rights of citizens 
I am uh, demanding that the police follow the law. Well, none of us can do this alone. None of us can do this alone. And when you have endless amounts of money for the other side, don't, no one person can do this alone. They cannot financially handle it, unless you're filthy rich in the first place, which if you would have been filthy rich in the first place, they probably would have seen it and said, oh, we better back off of this guy. We can't afford to go up against him. This stuff is expensive. Uh, I knew it was going to be expensive when I got into it. Yeah, we've talked about uh, that most, many times. Most of it I, I fund on my own, and the donations help. If you can, send it in, Yeah, please. And everybody, I have never asked for money for me because I have never been in a position where I have been jacked up this bad. So I've never asked for money for me, but I've asked for money for, for other people. And, and I hope you guys will, you know, a dollar, five bucks. You know, I know it's Christmas time. That's not a lot of money, but if you can afford it, please help Jack. He could use the help. We can't do this alone. He can't do it alone. And I believe in Jack. I believe that he will do with the money as he says he will do. I have seen how he handles the money and what happens with that money when he gets it. And he will use it for the legal fees. I, I never never intended to get arrested doing any of this. All I, all I intended to do was exercise the rights that are afforded to me under the Constitution and, and obey the law. And there's nothing I can do about unscrupulous police that are willing to violate the law uh, to get you to stop. I, I can't I can't do anything about that. And it's police like that that created us in the first place. So, and, and I would say uh, for at Leon Valley, not just your constitutional rights, but I mean rights very specifically outlined in the statutes of Texas, and also restrictions against the city for doing what they did. I mean it's <laughs> it's quite specified. Look, look with Leon Valley. I researched the law. I researched the facility. Uh, I researched the facility and made sure that it was a place where I could go uh, with a, a handgun, with a with a license to carry a handgun. And I made sure that it was not a place as weapons prohibited. Um, I knew that they had signs up that said it was a Class C misdemeanor to walk in there. They're called 30-06, 30-07 signs. Those are notices to handgun licensed folks that it's a class C misdemeanor punishable by fine only to walk into that building. That's what they had up on the windows. So at most I felt the only thing I would be looking at was probably maybe a class C ticket for, for violating those signs. Uh, of course, you know, you get that, you get that dismissed easily. I was not expecting Leon Valley to uh, lie and say that it was a court facility, which they did. Um, I, I, I looked up the law on it. Then there was uh, a Texas attorney, a general opinion. And by the way, I, I think it's it's not really hard to read. Appa I saw a video the other day, and apparently it's extremely dis difficult for a uh, guy who calls himself a family law attorney. And well, basically, he's just an expensive paperweight. But it, apparently it's, it's, it's hard for him to understand. But yeah. There is already a Texas Attorney General opinion that makes it illegal for them to have the signs up. It makes them illegal to exclude handgun license holders from the facility. Are those signs still up? I'm not sure. I, I'm, I'm too scared to go back over there. Oh, I'll tell you. that They're not up. They took them down. <laughs> I mean, I'll go over there and film from across the street, but I'm not having any conversations with them. I'm not protesting. I'm not doing shit. You do that, they're, they're going to kill me. The next thing they're going to do is they're going to kill me. Or they're going to arrest me again, uh, unlawfully. Anything to stifle my First Amendment right, and they've done that effectively there. I got to go by Universal City and check if they took their signs down. I, I I'm not going over there doing anything well, uh, other than maybe filming and keeping my mouth closed. But let me tell you, whenever all this is done, said and clear, and the smoke's cleared, they bought themselves tickets to the Jack Show <laughs> by doing what they did. The Jack and, and Friends show. <laughs> they when, when when all this is said and done, they are going to go by the, what the law says. They are going to follow the law. And I am going to show everybody how well they can follow the law. <laughs> I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I want to see that. Oh, be patient. Oh, yeah. I have patience. I knew this when we started all this, that we would have people wanting wow. updates and lawsuits flying out the yazoo and in a couple of months they want to know what happened and it's not it doesn't happen in a couple of months 
Hell, it takes a couple of months just for them to get off their butts down there and start doing shit. And then all they do is make it's tell you wait a couple more months, and then again wait a couple more months, and then again yeah, wait a couple so more for, months. For the Leon Valley sub, uh, criminal cases, Mark Brown, Tucson Police suck. He was the guy who was tased while filming. They said that the um, the little vestibule area there was a courtroom, <laughs> and they tased his ass. Um, his case was the first one to be dismissed. Uh, and then Mexican Padilla recently, Jesus Padilla recently took some sort of deal and uh, he'll claim that he got off of the felony because he watched the video with the ADA and the ADA decided no offense occurred. But nevertheless, he got off for, with some, I guess, probation, some conditions and time served. Now well, if there was no offense, that. then why conditions? Well, he had a lot of misdemeanors, too. Oh, that's true. That's true. I forgot about those. Yeah. Um. And then there's uh, the, the big civil case that you all may know about. It's the main one that's been in the news and everything. Uh, that was recently assigned to Judge Jay Pulliam. So that's where that case is, is with Judge Jay Pulliam. So those are the court case updates I know. Everyone else is still pending. That's correct. Yep. That's – and, and I, I know there's some other updates from other channels out there, but it's up to them, you know – I don't know what those updates are. Some I do, some I don't. But it's up to them to to bring that up when they're ready to bring those updates up. Right, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it's really hard for me to keep my mouth shut about some of the things, but it's up to them, man. When when they're ready to say whatever it is they're ready to say, then they'll say it. I'd I'd like to say something. I think it's very important. I know this stuff angers a lot of people. Uh, beyond belief, I know it's hard to watch. And uh, blood pressure I will medicine. Say this. I will say this: there's legal ways and illegal ways to handle this type of stuff. Don't do anything illegal. Um, I, I don't wish harm on anyone. Uh, and and I, I I just don't wish harm on anyone. Uh, you may disagree with me, but I don't believe these these police need to be physically harmed. That's just ridiculous. They need to be dealt with in accordance with the law. The law is on our side. It's it's not being exercised as well as it should be. But ultimately, in the, in the end, the law is on our side, and we have to use the law. Doing yes. unlawful activity does nothing to help anyone. And specifically doing unlawful acti- activity, I can speak for myself, hurts me. It makes what I'm doing and what I'm going through extremely difficult. Every time somebody makes a threat over the telephone or just does things like that, it makes my, my it makes what I'm doing and going through extremely difficult. It's already difficult enough, so so please if, if you if you feel like you want to do something and you think it might be illegal, don't do that. Just don't do it. Send me an email and say, Hey man, this is what I want to do. What do you think? Well, even and if it I'll just doesn't it. feel like it's the right thing to do. I mean, there's there's more than just law. You know, some of us have we all have our own moral guidelines that we go by. If it doesn't feel right, it probably isn't right. Don't do it. So, we we yeah. want to hold them accountable for what they do. We don't want to become as bad as they are. We want to teach them that you're not above the law. You have to stay within the law just like we do. And we're not going to go to your extent of breaking the law, lying, cheating, stealing, whatever it takes to get you in trouble. We're going to let you do it, and we're going to present that, and we're going to have you pay for it. It's going to take time. It's going to take money. Uh, And so if you can donate, donate, and be patient. It's also going to take support. And if you can't donate, you can support by watching. You can report by sharing this information with everybody that you know and subscribing to these channels and watching their content. All that supports without donating a single dime. And uh, all those things we need. Yeah, I, I would like to just say that violence is not only wrong and immoral and evil, but it's also completely counterproductive. Um, and that's why a lot of the comments on these videos, yeah, I know there are some people who are messed up, and I think I've finally blocked all of those people from my YouTubes, but a lot of them are police officers who are trying to make a narrative and yes. BS. But, Violence is very counterproductive. Um, 
music, video, communications, organizing, organizing together. That's really the weapon of the future. Uh, and it's moral and it's what will win. And so yeah, when you, I, if, you have, if you have anger issues, you shouldn't be in activism. I try to keep check on my comments when there's somebody promoting violence. I try to catch them all and get rid of them. But don't think for one minute that they're all activists. There's are plenty of them out there that are police supporters, that are policemen themselves, that are putting that in there, trying to make us look bad. So just because you see it doesn't mean it's one of us. And I'll, I'll tell you straight up, you know, uh, Steve, Justin, they, they work on uh, getting rid of some comments from their channel that they feel may be inappropriate or illegal. Um, and I don't. And each one of us has the right to either delete a comment or not delete a comment. Yep. There's nothing that requires uh, Justin or Steve to delete a comment. There's nothing require, requiring me. I'm sorry. There's nothing requiring there's nothing requiring us to delete or not delete them. As far as I'm concerned, you want to post something illegal on my face, on my uh, uh, social media. Um, I'm going to tell you don't. And then I'm going to tell you if you do. Well, I don't delete them because I look at it as a suspect list. So if you post something illegal on mine and something happens to a cop, they might just go to my channel and be knocking on your door, even if you don't have anything to do with it. So just keep that in mind if you're going to post something illegal. Yeah. Just don't do it. It's not worth it. Well, on my channel, I don't tolerate that. And I also don't tolerate people attacking other people and trying to make them miserable where they don't want to participate. Mm -hmm. But I try to be very lenient with that. And my my moderators are pretty good at that, I think, so far. That I've been pretty good at understanding what I want and what I don't want. But it's my channel. I make those decisions on how I want it run. And I run it not like it's an open-the-air thing, you know, but I try to keep it to the point where I want youngsters to be able to be on my channel and see what's going on and not just 18 and up. I want the, the 14, 15, 16-year-olds to be able to see and learn from what we're doing so they know how to handle the situations when they're out there. They know what their rights are. And they know Right, but with their with their parents, your your channel really is for eighteen and up, correct? Yes, 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 18 yes. And up. yes. But I, I want I, I and I want the the younger crowd to be able to come in and see it without their parents worried too much about what I'm saying. You know. I don't want a bunch of cuss words in there. Well I I really don't understand the cuss words. I understand the cuss words, but who made that decision back whenever what word what is the difference between F-U-C-K and, you know, other words that mean the same thing? You know, anyway, uh, when it comes to free speech, even though I'm not a big cusser, I do cuss. I'm not a big cusser. And I don't want to be in certain places with a bunch of people just raising hell cussing. I can just leave if, though if I don't like it. I don't tell them they have yeah. to shut up. I can just leave if yeah. I don't like it. And that's what yeah, you can too. do on cuss. my channel. If you don't like what I do, then you can leave it. Yeah, me too. I don't cuss either. <laughs> oh, oh, I can see the, the court filings now. <laughs> Jack Miller lied on his YouTube. He's being dishonest, Judge. <laughs> right. I, uh, I, I cuss quite often uh, in the morning when I get up and I go to the closet and I uh, I say the word Savaggio. That's, you know, uh, that's my cussing. Yeah. Well, maybe we ought to go to... Uh, Leon Valley sometime and have a sign that says F U C K T U C K D U C K, and then when somebody when they come out to go after the person with F U C K, then the rest of us complain about the the person portion the person holding the F U C K duck. says I don't like duck and I don't like tuck. <laughs> I'm complaining that upsets me. It 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 makes me want to beat the hell out of them. <laughs> Hey, why don't you guys? I, I don't. I, I'm not on your channels. I'm just looking at my phone here, and uh, I, I know some some folks have questions. Can, is there any questions you can see in there? Maybe that uh, you can ask. Maybe they have a question about Leon Valley or Almost Park or. How oh, my dog is we're just live on his channel. Um, we're watching the chat. The chat's been pretty good. They. Yeah. I've been glancing like over you. there, but 
we've really been talking, so I haven't paid much attention to it. Well, let's let's go through the the chats real quick. And see if <laughs> they keep complaining is- about that music. He's, he apologized. <laughs> he apologized for it. Come on. What do you, what what is it that you're playing, Justin? <laughs> oh, I was playing music on. I was on mine, and then I started turning it up because I was like, "You need to go to Steve's channel. You need to go to PMP News," and I kept turning it up and posting the link, and then they all just sat there and complained. <laughs> well, I, well, I, I you know, know what you were playing? Yeah, uh, Epidemic Sound. Yeah, I just I have this 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 list. I, I don't know how to stream it to y'all, but yeah, I listened to it, you know. I, and I know how it sounds. I mean, I heard the stream at the end. Obviously, I had it overpowering, but they just don't – a lot of people, they don't like my taste of music that I do on the stream sometime, and, and so they complain. But, I mean, I, I hear exactly – like tonight, I heard exactly how it was outputting. So, you know, I think okay. I think maybe what I was talking about earlier, earlier cuss words is some place in time somebody decided that if you're really mad and a word makes you feel better, then that's a cuss word. <laughs> yeah, hmm. yeah. Don't we know it? Any any questions? Questions? Concerns? Anyone, Let's anybody, see, how much was to... Jack's bail for the his arrest? Well, there were several of them, so I'm not sure which one you're asking about. Uh, for Leon Valley, it was $10,000. And that was a, a percentage of that you had to pay, right? I had to pay, uh, um, I think, uh, 1500 yeah. Oh, do I have... I, I know some, some people have asked this before. Do I have conditions on my bond? No, I don't. I don't have any conditions on my bond. Uh, oh, they were they were asking about James Miller. Um, James Miller. James Miller is a fictitious character <laughs> that Chief Savaggio came up with in the federal hearing on the Zinter versus Savaggio federal case that's in the Western District Court, in San Antonio, and he was so flustered on the stand that I'm not sure if he was talking about. James Freeman, or if he was talking about Jack Miller. Now, something <laughs> that was funny is he kept mentioning Bao, B A O, you know, clash with Bao. He kept talking about Bao. And, and my attorney, our attorney, had to keep reminding him that at the time, Bao had not signed on as a plaintiff. So the attorney's like, Bao's not a plaintiff. And he just couldn't get, he couldn't get that to his head. He was so much on Bao's jock that he could not get that name out of his head so then he came up with another name james miller and he he was actually he was pointing at me and he called me james miller you know screwed up hey bunny boots, why, bunny boots is asking about how many criminal cases are still pending with leon valley i don't know justin do you know uh no i mean i'm probably run out of fingers I, I can tell you there there are my case which is one um there is um james freeman uh bile um for the uh retaliation you know they said that people commented on their youtube channel putting out dickhead's address um there's also david bailey known as texas wolfman uh they charged him for blocking the doorway and uh that's it. Oh, another person that was charged uh, was uh, Brian Howe. He was initially ch- arrested on site and charged with interfering and resisting. He didn't do anything other than the police walked up to him and said, give me your camera. And he said, why? Uh, the magistrate immediately uh, rejected his charge. But then six months later, Chief Savaggio and company shopped for judges and found one to re-sign the affidavit that was rejected to re-sign it. And they charged him again and he had to bond out on that. And they just recently uh, last month dismissed that case again. And so Joseph Pierce isn't facing anything right now. That's a good question. I'm not sure. So there's possibly another one. Hey, no, no, no. I, I, it, I don't, I'm not quite sure, but I do believe that his charge was rejected by the magistrate. Right, but uh, it was. It was, but I, I maybe I can't remember. I thought they came back after him, too. Uh, they came back after Brian Howard and James Freeman. And James, yeah. 
Yeah. And we did it. James, James uh, multiple times. It took him like three additional attempts to get a magistrate to sign it. Yeah. And, and I walked down to the courthouse with those guys and ensured that they got in and out pretty much uh, drama free. So they got in, bonded out. And then, uh, yeah. So, so yeah, four or five, something like that. Hey. And, and all those cases, my, my next uh, hearing is January 20th on the Leon Valley case. Uh, we've been ready to go to trial for quite a while. A part of the delay or the majority of the delay was getting the uh, GoPro camera from Leon Valley. And uh, in case you guys don't know, the reason we have it um, is because as soon as they played it in court at a hearing, it became public information. And uh, Justin legally obtained that footage through a records request. So, and, and the DA, the the DAs were bitching though. The assistant DAs were bitching in court though about, oh well, we don't want to put this map into evidence. Well, we don't want to put the video in. That self-serving. Uh, we shouldn't have any evidence in this case at all. Yeah, the state objected to us using my GoPro video on the basis that it was, I quote, hearsay and self-serving. <laughs> The video of the felony suspect filming the entire incident. Yeah, and again, because it showed that they were lying and they didn't want that in there. Oh, yeah. Oh. And I would have to agree. <laughs> it is self-serving. Thank you. <laughs> the, 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 the beautiful thing about a court hearing is that the truth comes out. It's a beautiful thing. And Leon Valley provided all the evidence. <laughs> and if you're not in court to serve yourself, who the hell are you there for? Yeah. <laughs> but it's also evidence. It's evidence of the truth. Yeah. It may Jack, be self-serving, he, but it's evidence of the truth. Savaggio's not going to be able to sleep tonight if you keep this up. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. I don't think he's anything would bother him from sleeping. If he hasn't if he has not had mental and well he might not already had mental issues, but you can't yeah. be doing what he's doing and have sleep issues, you know, because you would never no, sleep. Well, I, I, he's still I mad believe, about Jack. <laughs> I, I do believe uh, Miss Kunstler has a snoring problem. That might bother him when he's sleeping. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I don't know. That's just what I hear from the uh, local bar that I go to mm -hmm. <laughs> in Leon Valley. So, Hey, President says twice Hill Country Village has told me I can't speak because it's interfering, and we've had many times we heard that from a bunch of lying pieces of <clears throat> with badges. Interfering what, what is not speak. I mean, speaking is not interfering. Right, right. In, in, in Texas statute, yeah, and he is from the Texas. Very bottom of, at the very bottom of the Texas statute for interfering, it does specifically say that inter, uh, interfering it does not include speech. Of speech only. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so ransom but, but, pending. But that, but, but I'm on bond right now from a, an interfering charge in the San Antonio police file where they listed in their affidavit that my presence yeah. is interfering because my presence caused them to not be able to concentrate on their call. Yeah. My presence. Well, we know they know the law and they don't care. They just want to hem you up, cost you money. <laughs> you know, they're butt hurt and they want to make you pay. Uh, uh, a ransom Pentagon asked about figuring out what happened in court and – uh, there was a court reporter there. Her name's um, Roxanne Pena. And uh, if y'all want to give her a call, if someone wants to pay for it, I was afraid to ask how much it was. Uh, but I assume it'll eventually come out in further court trial dates. But if someone wants to pay for the transcript, you know, yeah. you're welcome you to. Guys. Maybe, you know, y'all post that to your little darknet servers or whatever y'all do. <laughs> or donate to, donate to Justin. He's, uh, you know, he, he does a lot of public information requests. He's a master at it, and he spends a lot of time doing it. And he spends a lot of time, uh, money doing it, and uh, he has, you know, some people have donated him to get records. Uh, he knows how to do it, and he's very good at doing it, even when they want to keep the records from him. So you, you you hand him the money to pay to help pay for this stuff, and he'll go get those records. Well, Definitely, I, I, I've been sitting back watching Justin for quite a while now. I haven't, uh, you know, I've been in his chats, but. We haven't done much together yet. This is the first time, well, second time, right, that we've been, well, this is the first time live we've done any video. Live, together. yeah. And uh, hopefully it won't be the last. I, I'm ready to, to do some stuff with you whenever you want. Uh, 
He is a major pain in the ass in police departments all across Texas. <laughs> The, he hey, he's uh, put a new to, uh, he has put a new twist in the butt hurt syndrome. He's now using to, paperwork to irritate there even more. When it comes to getting records, um, he's a force to be reckoned with. So if you're if you're contemplating on sending a few bucks his way to help him get these records that they're charging for, it's money well spent. And if well, you're not and if you're not sub to him. And you're, you don't know what I'm talking about? Go over and watch some of his stuff. He, if you haven't already gotten a pretty good idea from tonight, so you know. So this is a, a stack of Joe's emails that they printed out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, except for they're trying to extort another two hundred and ninety-one dollars from me, which is not very, not very great. And I already paid a hundred and sixty or so. So. Hey, hey, Justin, you remember that time we went over to be a Metropolitan Transit? And we spent three or four hours there with yeah. scanners scanning uh-huh. their all their yeah. police reports. You yeah, can't get, we did so, every police report. Well, maybe not. I'm going to go ahead and say it was every police report because they probably haven't had many where they didn't trespass someone. So we scanned virtually like every police report since the existence of the VIA police department. <laughs> and we did it in yep. like two, like it didn't even take that long. It was a little over three hours. Then I went back another time, I guess, with you or by myself. I, I guess I was by myself. I think I was by myself, but I didn't. So, so the, the point of asking that, the point of asking that was, there's no option of doing that at Leon Valley, scanning stuff, or or recording it in person. Oh well, she gave me another. She gave me another cost estimate, and it was going to be like fifty dollars cheaper if I went up there myself, and it's not worth getting shot or raped or whatever they might do to me up there <laughs> right right and so they're they're charging you for labor right that, that's a huge part of the cost that's all the cost yeah so i have a question if and they use other people to also work on these records as well right getting them ready well right that's the so the so the the issue is is that how they do it is they have you know, they have they have justin's each, getting rated justin's getting rated <laughs> they have each city department <laughs> Uh, pulls their own documents, right? And then the city secretary packages it out, redacts it, and gives it to you. And so instead of giving this stuff, you know, that's all bullshit. They should have never printed that stuff out. They should have done their search and drag and dropped it into a folder and put it on a, on a drive and said, here's all the emails. It would have taken like less than an hour. But instead, they drew it out into a two-day process of printing out each email because they want to act like it's a big burden. And they want to make us me pay more and it's kind of all of us but they want to make me pay more and and so that's joe's doing in the police department and then they go and <coughs> bring that stack of papers to her desk and say here you go and then so she's going to scan them in but i mean it, it, that's only like an hour or two of scanning that's not that much scanning they're making but yeah so they say she says it's going to take 16 hours to get that stack of paper to me which is that's ridiculous. So attorneys, so, so attorneys, they'll give you an itemized statement. I mean, for every fifteen-minute increment of what they're doing, and uh, I mean, literally, I got a statement where uh, the attorney was at a hearing, and there was a part in there where it said restroom, and I wasn't charged for that time. Mm. I mean, they're very detailed in their invoices. Do you get invoices like that from these cities? Uh, they're supposed to sign like a affidavit if you ask them about the amount of time they really spent, but no one really will. It's not, that. But it's not itemized, so we couldn't find out how much. Um, right. Well, obviously, I would like it to be on camera, like so I could go back and make sure they were really working that time and how much okay, they were so, on Facebook and how often they left the room, that sort of stuff. Yeah. Okay, You're lucky okay, they so didn't charge you for the bathroom time because they probably would could have said, "I was thinking about it." while I was in the bathroom, so I'm going to charge you for it. Well, I have, a, I have a legit concern here. Obviously, you know, attorneys don't charge you for when they go to the restroom during your trial. And uh, I would assume that cities are not going to charge you for their restroom time. And uh, obviously that adds up to some savings, right? Because if they're charging you $20 an hour and they spend 30 minutes dropping a log, well, then that saves you 10 bucks in theory, right? Well, it's and $18 so was, dollars an hour, but yeah. I was just kind of asking... Now, hold on. So you said $18 an hour. So half of 18 would be, 
I only had a GED, remember, so just give me a minute. Nine, nine dollars, right? Mm -hmm. So nine dollars for a half hour. So 15 minutes, I mean, uh, uh, 30 minutes in the restroom at nine dollars. That's, that's nine dollar savings. So I, I was just because I was curious, you know, in the itemization, you might be able to find out how much money you save every time Savaggio rubbed one off to the city manager's Facebook page or Gabe Horn. I think your I friend from California still got the calculator out on that one. Yeah, so if it took him like a minute and a half to bust on uh, Kelly, you know, Kelly Kunstler's Facebook uh, page. Yeah, you know, bring up Kelly Kunstler, but really if you want to know who the, the biggest groupie is, it's the city councilwoman, um, Catherine Rodriguez, who actually was one of the open records requests I did, the one subject to this. Uh, yeah, well, he's, he's either uh, that, that's, off. that's That's Hold how on. I keep up. No, that's how I keep up with Joe Savaggio. Because she's with him like almost every day and posts a picture up there like all the time. So if you don't want to know what he's up to, that's what I'm doing. You know, they're at the air attack helicopter. He's at, uh, he was at Special Olympics today. Just wherever he is, she's always, you know, right up next to him. So that's. Yeah. Well, he's either, he's either rubbing one off to her pictures or he's rubbing one off to that dude that let you out the door. What's that officer's name? Oh, when you were there uh, filming, um, that dude tried um, to kick you out the door. I don't know you taught uh Mandry? No, I haven't nah. had any contact with him. That little no, nah, that little uh Hispanic looking dude. <laughs> oh, oh, you're talking to she uh Azer, she's a she's a woman. That that's what I heard, but I don't believe it. Well, I haven't asked her, that's just what her, her report her personnel report said. I'm not assuming gender. I'm not assuming that she's a guy. I'm just saying that she. I haven't like asked her what she prefers, but I'm just going by the. I'm just going by the state hey, paperwork. Every everybody saw the uh, living colors kit. Oh, oh, who, who, who's the officer? What is his name? Oh, I don't know. It, it looking like a man. <laughs> if you don't know that skit, you're you're not gonna get it. It looking like a man. Or was he tough? Was he tall? No, no, no. He looking like a man. Y'all haven't seen that one? I haven't. Come on, man. You spend too much time watching TV, Jack. One, one of the, uh, maybe one of the uh, people watching can post a link to the uh, In Living Color. He looked like a mom. It was a Chinese lady, Chinese storekeeper. It was a skit. It was a comedy skit. I don't remember it. Well, I don't remember it because I didn't see it. But so All you officers at Meow Valley that are watching, put your pins down. It was a comedy skit. <laughs> All right, well, we've been on for like uh, almost an hour and a half, so I think uh, we can wrap this up tonight. And uh, I hope to do some more of this, uh, uh, maybe get some other channels from across the country to jump in every once in a while. I think Justin is thinking about something similar. Maybe we can help each other out and do some stuff together. Uh, we'll be working on Absolutely. that and see how it goes. So I want to thank both of y'all for being here tonight. Remember, if you can afford it, help jack out if you can't that's fine you know just watch the stuff we're doing you know hit the like button share it facebook whatever twitter you know uh, that's all helping support us and get the word out and every time the word gets a little bit further that's just benefit us all so well thank you for hosting us tonight hey no problem anytime oh, guys. Uh, there, there was some some people had some questions about my teeth um if you guys haven't noticed they're all there now um, I gave him some of mine. So, yeah, see. All right. So, so this is serious, though. Um, my teeth, all these right here are fake, all of them. And uh, what happened was they were, I was in a car accident that I got hit in the face. Um, it knocked out most of my teeth. There was one, the one that was missing for so long, it lasted for about another two years, finally came out. And uh, so I finally got them all fixed. And uh, it, People were asking also how much it costs. It did not cost me anything. Uh, actually, somebody, uh, one of my subscribers, a couple of them, uh, six in total, uh, donated the money that was needed uh, to get my teeth fixed. And the total bill was right around um, $12,000. Oh. So, yeah, and, and, and these subscribers made it very clear that they wanted that money to go to fi fixing my teeth. Um, you know, I provided them invoices and, and x-rays and things like that. So they know it was legit and, uh, provided them everything they needed to know, to know that it was legit. But yeah. So I had some subscribers that really love, uh, what I do for police accountability and they provided that the funds to get that done. So thank you guys. They, none of them want to be mentioned. 
yep. they want to remain anonymous. But thank you. Yep, we got some damn good supporters out there. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't know what to do without them. Yeah. In fact, we couldn't do much without the, them. They did it on the condition that I uh, do more accountability videos, keep the camera pointed at cops, and smile sometimes when I when I'm talking on the uh, video. Well, I got plenty of stuff that we can do together when you get time, Jack. Great, awesome. Thank you for and having I'll me. Keep on. You, and I'll keep you. keep you away from Leon Valley and almost Park for a while. Well, thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. Thank you both. We will see y'all later. Thanks everybody for stopping by. Till next time. Be safe, everyone. See you next time. <laughs>